Okay, welcome back, and we're into the most fun part of this whole process of the character design construction, which is uh, doing the final modeling and sculpting. And you see the mush character here is um, coming along pretty good. I got all the clay on to the armature except for the hands. Uh, I leave the hands and fingers to last always. Uh, I would recommend the same thing for anything in the face, eyelashes, hair, because you're going to handle the character quite a bit. And uh, I'm going to add some accessories. And I've been making some design decisions. So when I did the initial design drawings, uh, the part I was most unsure about was up here underneath the head with the top of the cap of the mushroom character, the myconid, and how that would transition into 3D from a side view and connect that skull-ish part of the character up into the cap. And so uh, what I came up with, I was pretty happy with this kind of a structural. And that's why one of the things that's fun when you deal with gravity is you kind of dis uh, figure like, oh, he probably needs, you know, some more something here and there. So I made these little struts that are kind of similar to the little fan parts that underneath the uh, cap. And so this whole cap pops right off. Uh, now I used a brass stock with the plumber's petty to fit just right i use the square brass stock you can use round if you want something to rotate and i'll have another separate video on that you don't have to use brass stock of course but for this character with the a, a cap this heavy if i'm weighing this between the two this is actually a little heavier than the whole body and what's happened now this could happen with any of your characters depending on your pose is uh you may need to repose or uh, reposition your um how it's mounted so it doesn't fall apart. So if your character is falling apart or, or falling over consistently, you'll want to address that right away. So I, I bent the pose more into a sneak. You see the clay's cracking here as I bent. If you had that strong steel stick in the, in the pelvis, you should be able to bend that torso. I also wanted to maybe carve a little wedge away in the back of the neck under the chin to tilt the head looking uh, maybe uh, upward a little more from where he's sitting on the desk. But uh, for now, I'm just gonna leave it like that. And so every time he gets a little weight here, he's falling over, right? So I got this little tiny base. So this might be something several of you need to do. So I thought I would do a little demonstration. So what I do is I uh, get a larger base and just mount it down. It's down a little bit lower. And just mount the smaller wood base into a larger wood base and problem solved. And you should be able to get one of these little boards for like a dollar or two down at the store. Just uh, again, um, people are going to the hardware store. If you're going to get gouged, they're going to charge three times as much. If you go to the hardware store and get a little piece cut, uh, it should only be a few bucks. And the uh, they might even let you go to scrap pile. I go to the Ace Hardware here in Castro Valley and they let me just go in the back up the hill there and get some scrap. So. Um, yeah, having, uh, pieces that break away like this, super convenient. And this guy's real easy to work with. And now design wise too, I'm kind of happy. He almost looks like he's got a little King's crown on, uh, looks like one of the pieces fell away there. And I've come up with some more ideas for how I want to finish this character, which I'll get into, but let's do this first. So we're going to, uh, draw into the base here. We're going to mark where we want to put the screws in. So I'm going to go in here and just make sure that I have this position where I want it to. And I'm going to use this opportunity to make the base uh, more interesting to do some storytelling stuff. So I have some other drawings. Uh, they're not here, but of little, you know, some rocks and some little uh, myconid or um, fungi, fung fungus stuff around the base there. Okay, so um, I'm just going to go with the two easiest just to go where I can know I can get the drill in. So I'm going to go right here and do one diagonal here. So remember, always pilot hole in on this pine. Try and go in as about an inch as needed as much as possible so it doesn't split. It would. And I come over here on the side and I'll mark. And if you uh, did get your, I have a message from one of you, and I'm sure it might happen more than one, but uh, if your wire is breaking at the ankles or the foot, if you twist it too hard, uh, then you'll just have to get a piece of armature, a shorter piece, drill it down in the hole, steel stick, uh, JB quick it in and attach it and, and lash it and, and wind it around there. So, um, yeah, it's going to happen. 
but once it's in there and it's strong, like this guy, like if I hold this, like he's super, super strong. Like he fell over, took about a three foot plunge off the table earlier today and it just barely bent a tiny bit at the spine. So I was really pleased that nothing broke apart with this character. So uh, whenever you're using power tools, unless you're wearing leather gloves, do not use plastic or cloth gloves. What I've had happen several times already is um, as the girl's twisting, uh, it actually caught on the cloth of my glove and twisted up, and that could really cause serious injury. So, uh, always playing the uh, dad professor here. I don't want anyone to get hurt while they're doing this. So, to start off with, uh, I'm going to pre drill this first part and always put a board underneath so that you don't drill through into the table. And even like I have a triple protect, I have another board here. I got my good gaming table underneath. And so, the bits again, uh, the drill bit should be as close to the thickness of the actual screw uh, body itself, but not the threads. The threads are the part that bites into the wood. So I already figured that part out. So I'm going to go in here and pre drill this first couple pieces here. So and I'm going at a slight angle with the spine that actually keeps it pretty strong. And then go around over here and that there as well. Now, um, as I'm going here, I'm going to vacuum this stuff up because I don't want to get sawdust in my laundry uh, clay. Because it is forever clay, so to speak. The last two, the longer you uh, want to use it, over and over, so keep all of your sawdust and shavings and metal shavings and your filing, if you're filing your aluminum. Yeah. Lint, cat hair, dog hair, whatever. Try and keep your clay clean and you'll be able to use it. Uh, until they come up with something even cooler. Some, some uh, even better movie visual effects mm -hmm. clay that's out there. So, oh, I fell into this yet. So what I'm going to do is reposition. I went through this one only. Let me position that again. And make sure I got it in the spot that I want it to be. There we go. Right about there. I test it out like clamping these together that with the weight of the cap it's not gonna fall over as easily anymore so now i can go in here and go below there you go so even more sawdust came up and trying to keep it in the same position there we go hold it nice and firm and, and back out again there we go okay and then i'm going to turn my screw speed back to slow Right, because we don't want to go fast when we're doing the actual um, cranking of the bolt. And I like these little uh, side hex bolts. They don't slip as easily as a Phillips. That's your bolt is your four sided, and these little. Uh, Oh man, I'm blanking on the name of these. I bought so many for deck, uh, but they're usually using for deck screws, and they bite really well. And it's nice to be working on it and have it not slip. So, and really clean here. Make sure I get all the stuff up as I go. And I'm a little neurotic about this, so you guys can laugh at me. Good. I don't have to do this, but I like to work. Okay, so. Um, and then if, uh, as you're going, uh, it does help sometimes to have an extender if you need to. The extender will make it a little wobbly though, but I like the extender because it kind of, uh, keeps me back away from the, uh, sculpture a little bit when I'm putting this in. So I kind of like that extra space that it gives. So I'm not kind of shoving up against the member. This is just a block in. I haven't done any detail yet. So that way you're not going to worry too much about pressing or, or bumping it or something like that. So here we go. So really slow. Get this started. You can feel when it bites into the block below because it's a harder wood. And screw down in there. And it's going to be a little hammer drill hard into the wood. So it's sunk down in there pretty well. And... Let's see, let me turn that light off. Oh, 
just play it from here. Speaking of stabbing in the face. So if you wanted to, uh, you could get a countersink bit, like we talked about that in class. Little ones. You could bevel it down in there, and then the bevel will allow the bevel of the head of the, of the uh, screw to sink down in, so it's a countersink. Uh, countersink. So just to press that home again. This one's pretty dull. I think I used it on the Ipe Ironwood, so it's all messed up at this point, but no biggie. So I'll just go in here and give it a little counter sink. It kicks up a little sawdust. Sawdust off. Drill it back in there. And I can already feel the base is so much stronger now. Yeah, I'm just going to fill in the uh, ledges here with clay. Uh, to do an organic. I could mix it up though now that I'm this little terrace step. I could almost do like a pedestal or do some flagstone or whatever the Mycanid people have to use for stone. There we go. Okay. Nice and easy, firm. Keep my other hand pressing firmly but away from the side here. So now I'm not going to go a little time. And when it gets into the hard kick. That's the hammer setting on here. Uh, pricier type of drill than you might have, but it does that. Okay, so now it's really solid. So I put a cap back on. And I've debated now, and it's part of the conceptual sculpting stage when you're using sculpture to develop an idea. It's very different. It has a lot of different properties than you're just drawing or painting because you get to feel it and hold it and come up with new ideas. So I'm already liking this idea that maybe he's the uncrowned king. Like he doesn't even know because he's had his cap part of his body. And then when I took it off, it's like, it looks like a little crown, like kind of like an old school English spiky crown or something. But so now that I got this uh, new base attached to the bottom, let's wait to it. And uh, let's see now if I put this on and press it in there, snaps in really well. And yeah, it's, uh, if I bump it now, it's not falling over unless I really punch it, so it's great. And yeah, because I use that thicker armature wire, he is solid, it's not going anywhere. And I think any of the wobbles is actually, uh, the board itself is uh, not perfectly flat, but I can see if I hold it tight here and give it a little push, yeah, there's a little flex there, so. But over time, it's going to flex and get weaker. And here's where I bent the spine. There's a little gap there. So I got to fill, press that clay in really tight. Let me take this back off again. And push this clay in more. So um, what's happening is I'm pushed and pushed and kind of been really rough with this sculpture throughout and because of that it's going to weaken and it's going to get more and more wobbly so i want to be aware of that going forward and i know you're really using this as a demonstration so uh, i'm kind of doing a lot of this stuff on purpose <laughs> that's my story i'm sticking to it no um it just kind of happens and um, so that's how, how you want to extend your base and think about accessories, think about uh, how you want to do the hands, any held objects afterwards, and think about uh, just using, you could use uh, cut posts of chopstick as little connectors to make this more rigid. And so far, so good in terms of um, being able to uh, design this. So the next phase we're going to do here is we're going to um, shapes we're going to do the constructive all geometry so i provided a whole set of images for book and the drawings so so what we're really looking at here is uh, uh, the planes of the body so in these handouts you can see the chiseled geometric shape of all the main muscle bone groups and uh, the full figure here, as well as the marks of the um, bony 
landmarks. Like I said, the piece of the bone that is just barely uh, covered by skin, that's the bony protrusions, that's your landmarks. And then how the uh, muscle groups can be uh, carved into basic planar shapes. There's, there's one in the abdomen and the shoulders, especially the back and the shoulder blades, the uh, leaks in the rib cage. Uh, the arms and the legs have their own chapter and process in there. So you'll see the, uh, if you could get it down to like, you know, five, six, seven sided shapes and use real nice planar edges for your overlaps, you're going to be in a really good shape to finish and detail your character. So uh, let's get into that phase and I'll also show you some uh, head and face studies with the eyes and We'll go from there. Um, just get started a little bit down here on the foot. So I chiseled um, the bevel and edge along the side. You know, they, they kind of look more more like slippers, like single toe slippers, like the kind I had when I was in Japan. But I kind of chiseled out and brought those edges up like we did in class a few times. I also started to go um, up underneath the chest here and did a few bevel swipes with the tool underneath this um, pectoral muscles. And I did a couple here uh, trying to bring out the bony landmarks at the sternum for the clavicles and out to the side where it goes to the deltoids and then the sternocleidomastoids. Of course, he's a fantastical character, so his neck's going to end, shoulders and back is going to be very different than a standard human. but. Um, I'm hinting at real world geometry a lot as I'm doing this. So get this guy back into position here. There we go. And let's start uh, carving out the planes for this character so that we can do the detail pass and call him done. <laughs> 